I'm having a really difficult time this morning. It's Wednesday, July the 10th, 2024. I just need for people to not be this stupid. I just, for as long as I am alive, I will continue to pull together as much information as I can to try to change the way people think about the world around them. But I'm really, I just, I'm tired of repeating myself. Because it feels like justification, like I have to justify the things that I say. And I guess I do because, you know, people don't believe you unless you can show them evidence as if, you know, they aren't unhappy themselves. Like, you know, do you care that you're, I mean... I mean, I get it. I get that religion teaches you to accept your suffering and all that. But, you know, it's like. I mean, you you know, you can't even get people to think ahead into a place, you know, like heaven. You know, can you imagine? Well, what would be different, you know? What what would be different there than here? And, you know, people will say, you know, I don't know. I just know it'll be better. And I, I mean, that makes no sense. I mean, and why would you invest yourself in wanting to go to a place and you have no idea, you know, because somebody told you it's going to be better then you assume that that's the case and they have drilled it in you so long that you just, you know, know that it will be better and, I just, um, I was looking back at the video that I posted yesterday on NASA and, um, solar power. And, um, what I want to share with you is the article from 2020, um, about the budget that Donald Trump allocated specifically for NASA at the same time he was doing the $2.1 trillion CARES Act, um, which is supposed to help people to recover from the financial loss from not working or whatever during COVID. And when I did the calculation, based on that figure, every living human being in the United States, based on the population at that time, should have received a check for seven thousand for about seven thousand dollars, and I mean even infants. If you are a every living human being in the United States, based on that figure, should have received a check for seven thousand dollars for each person in their household, even infant. E infants get seven thousand dollars. The parents, each of the parents, get seven. So you know, I was you know I was like I, I should where I didn't get a check. You know, I, I didn't get a check. But NASA got a check. They got a check for, I think, $23 billion. Not million, billion dollars for one year. And that's on average about what the government allocates to NASA. Um, somewhere around, you know, 20 something billion dollars for a year, for one year. So, you know, from my standpoint, you have to except that NASA is the biggest branch of the Department of Defense. And that is how the Space Force has been de developed ongoing. And, you know, in this um, clip, they talk about how they want to remove solar panels now, because probably because people were smart enough to realize you don't have to be on a municipal electricity grid if you have your own solar power. By saying that, you know, people need to install these $20,000 batteries. Well, another word for battery is generator. So if you think about being, you know, hospitals and how hospitals must have generators so that if there's a power loss, that there's no loss of power and functioning of all the equipment inside the hospital. That's what a generator or how a generator on your house would do. It would ensure that if there's a power outage, that there's no interruption in electrical service, which they need 
for all of this infrastructure. You have to have your power on. And I know that because in the summer of 2022, okay, it was before Deja moved out. So maybe it was 2021. Um, I have it in my journal. Uh, we lost our power was turned off for lack of payment. Now keep in mind that during COVID, all utility payments, all that stuff got suspended. People, some people don't know that, and then some people forgot that during in 2020 that they would not turn off any municipal services for non-payment because they knew people weren't going to be working and all the other kind of stuff. And so these bills just accumulated. You know, we didn't have to pay a power, a water a gas bill for almost a year. And our understanding was that it was, you know, that those um, fees were going to be forgiven because I mean, you know, that's a, that's a way that you can give me my six thousand seven thousand dollars is to tell me that, you know, you gave me free utility service for that entire period. Uh, and I don't have to pay it back, but you know what, you know, of course that was a, a time limited thing, but you know, if you're going to do it, then to say, okay, now we feel like people are back to work, so we're going to re-implement, you know, regular billing and then kind of start from there. But that's not what they did. They, you know, what they said is we've been accumulating your bill and we we put it on a um a delayed payment. And now we want all, you know, $2,000 of this water bill for, you know, that you haven't been forced to pay, which I just, I was like, I can't. And what do you do? Because they can turn it off. You know, we know how to turn it back on. A lot of people, a lot of families who understand how meters work do. But, you know, we we are um, good citizens and we try our best to be law abiding and to pay our debts as we accumulate them in a way that we can afford them. But but anyway, um, what, I, what I was saying about that was um, so our electricity was turned off and I did not care. And it was hot, just like it is now. It wasn't as hot. Um, but it was very hot that summer and so that we didn't have any air conditioning. And so I told the kids, I said, I am grateful that y'all are over 18 because what we're going to do now is we're going to put on our bathing suits and we're going to take a shower and lay on towels and that will keep us cool. And every time you, if you start getting hot again, just get back in the shower and get wet again and then go back, you know, put on the towel and go back and do whatever you do. And then you can use your devices until the battery runs out. And that's it because I don't need it. I, you know, I have the skills and capacity to be able to take care of my family without using all of this crap, which is another reason why people like me are a threat. I know how to survive without it because there were times when I was growing up when we didn't have it for the same reasons that I'm just explaining to you. They would turn it off and so we would have to make do for it until we could get it back on or whatever. So I have some skills that most people don't have in 2024. And, um... But for me, I said, I don't care because even then I was feeling the radiation from this grid, but they weren't, it wasn't as consistent as it is now. It's like they did it in intervals where it was first like three hours at a time, four times a day. And then it would just gradually increase until right around the time the casino opened. It was like 24 hours a day. Like it's, you know, it's just on all the time and it's very painful. It is very painful, which also helps me to appreciate why they feel the need to have a genocide in certain areas because the people who survive um, because they do not give in to their trauma mill system of health management um, they you know they have immunity to a lot of the things that they use during that time and they can't I mean that, that makes you like superhuman and so they cannot have that <laughs> you know they cannot have people running around who you know, have the capacity to um, have immunity to the weapons that they use. And so they have to upgrade them. You know, all the all of the experimentation that they did, um, you know, during the genocidal period, you know, they use and implement other places where people have not been affected by those same contaminants. But the people who are here are already immune to the strongest version that they have available at this time. For the rest of the population and so they have to get rid of them somehow and um you know i knew that they needed for our power to be running in order for all of this other equipment to go and for them to continue with whatever it was they were doing i mean you know i had to piece together like what do you want because you know that was kind of my motivating question like what do you want from me and what do you want 
Like, why are you doing this? Like, look, can I just do whatever it is? If you want me to stay in or whatever, can I just do that? And then you leave me alone. But of course, the answer is always no. They, you, that's terror. That's what terrorism is. Is you can't, there is nothing you can do and there is nothing you cannot do that will cause them to leave you alone. There's just nothing you can do. They're going to harass you, period, because they, they have to really, if you follow the, the, the line of thinking that I have right now. So um, I said, just leave it off and because that means they can't access the Wi-Fi and they can't access the cable. Now, people who have access to the hard line cable line didn't have anything to worry about, but they're at a, at a level beyond the people who do need access to the to the cable and the wi-fi and the bluetooth and all of that other kind of stuff so within three hours it was our power was back on i didn't pay jermaine did come home and he was like i'm gonna pay you know i'll pay it um probably because of maya complaint she was at work when the power went out so she didn't experience any of it by the time she got home the power was back on so you know we still we had the air had come back on and um you know so the house was cool again which was fine i was like that's fine whatever you know i i any resistance that i give they always find something to counter it which is why i get so upset and so frustrated because i'm tired i'm just exhausted and that's what they use i mean that's all they can use with someone like me because you know, I because I've been through all of it and I'm still here. I haven't had any surgeries or anything like that. So, you know, I'm I'm a huge threat. So the only thing they can do is to just keep me exhausted all the time. And it's it's not even a physical, you know, exhaustion like I couldn't run. It's because of all of the the physical pain, which is why pain management is such a huge aspect of what they do. Which brings me to these NASA studies. So, you know, you, you have to have people on some level who are willing to volunteer for all this testing. And, um, you know, and then they try it and then they try implement, they try it with these people who volunteer and then they implement it in the general population and see what happens. And if it works, then they start expanding it to more of the general population and then it goes on and on. Meanwhile, you know, we have people like this reporter here and, you know, I, I, my first instinct was to like go all in on her because I'm just so over Gen Y. It's like they are so damn arrogant. It's like you are arrogant and wrong. Like you have no idea how wrong you are because of this kind of reporting right here. So let me, let's just listen to this thing right here where she's talking to, um, the the desk reporter who is really i mean i don't have to go all in on her because he does a good job of it himself and you know it's like he's essentially saying are you really have you really thought about the angle that you took with the story and does it logically make sense to you is sort of how he was presenting it but i mean it was sort of you know condescending and you know she probably was feeling some type of way after the cameras turned off but you know what are you gonna do um but he asked some legit questions. Exactly. Like, take that duck thing, you know, mm -hmm. the, the peak of the duck, and then use that to pick things up. And then when you need it, then you put them down like your car does when you're yeah. regenning. Yeah, it's so cool. There's so many innovative ideas right now like that. that people describe that like a Jenga building and bricks, like Jenga bricks of electricity that come up and down. There's another one they call a ski lift. And actually, there's an idea to use defunct uh, coal mines and the slopes of defunct coal mines to be able to go down the slope and back up like a ski lift to generate and store energy. So, so many creative ideas. That one we just showed, the Jenga one, they're modeling that in Italy and India, but nothing like that here in California yet. I know that lawmakers have said permitting is always a challenge here but obviously a lot of ideas. Permitting is such a challenge, but like we're supposed to be innovators and we've got a lot of sunshine, fingers crossed. But <laughs> Liz, thanks so much for joining us. So, you know, for me, it's like, you, you know, uh, when you're doing, you know, when you're telling a story, you can tell what your angle was from the beginning because you're going to report it <laughs> You know, if you're not an investigative reporter, you're going to report it based on what your understanding was. And then you're going to pull all the pieces that you recorded and gathered and all the elements in ways that, you know, make your understanding and, you know, and your thoughts about it make sense. 
which is different than the way I do things. I mean, I do explain the things I share, but I pretty much just present the facts. Here's the information right here. And if there are words in here that you don't understand, then, you know, I suspect you won't understand. This is what they mean. And here are some other things you can do to further your investigation to see if you came up with the same conclusion I have about this particular situation, if there are any elements of it that could be construed as theoretical. So, you know, that that's investigative reporting. And then it is not good reporting as far as I'm concerned. If you do not, if you're going to report on a problem, any aspect of a problem. So in this case, it was, you know, the state doesn't know what to do with all this extra solar energy. So what should the state do then? You know, what what is the, why is that a problem? And what should people know in order to do something about it? If you aren't reporting all the way to that, because that's why people watch the news. They want to know what's going on and they want to know how whatever it is that's going on is affecting them personally. So if you don't cover that aspect of it and then tell people, what they need to know in order to make a decision and then do something about it, then anything that you report upon is trash. It's really useless information. I mean, it's just a bunch more information to cause you to be stressed out and worry about things that maybe you want to do something about, but you have no idea how to because the way it's explained, you don't really understand fully what's going on. You just know it's bad. So, you know, I, th that that is how you continue to feed into unnecessary fear about things that people have control over because all, there's no aspect of any of this that I'm talking about or that I'm upset about that people cannot do something about because it is people that are causing the problem. And so it's really about, you know, every single, you know, in terms of like all of the, the stuff that's going on with NATO and then, you know, now they're doing all this reporting about another attack in Ukraine, which is a big distraction. Every single, every single solitary person involved from the families affected at the children's hospital, for example, up to, you know, Netanyahu and the prime ministers and the presidents of these um, nations, when they are off camera, go home somewhere where they, you know, the place where they eat and pee and poop and they take a bath and where their clothes are and all that. Every single individual person goes home. And so I always ask, who is that? You know, whenever I get upset about somebody and I want to investigate them, the first thing I want to know is where do they live and who lives there? Because if they have a family there, like a wife or a husband, and they have kids, then there have to be some people on this planet who they care about and who care about them. And so my question is to them at home, are you holding this person accountable for the crap that they're doing that's impacting the entire nation or country or the world? Like, are you okay living with this person, knowing that that's what they do? Because that puts you in collusion with whatever they do. So if you are in a situation where the person who lives in your house is a prime minister or a president of a country or a nation, and you at home, the people who they care about and who they come to for comfort and to commune with and, you know, their family, you know, and even their extended family, they go, you know, whoever comes over for holidays or, you know, their children and their grandchildren, if they have grown children, if you aren't holding them accountable and saying, you know what, I'm not okay with this thing that you do. And I need you to stop because otherwise we can't have a relationship because what you're doing affects the people around me and therefore the people around those people and then the people around those people and so on and so forth. I mean, it starts at home. There is no situation that is in the news, local, national, international news that ultimately does not start in people's individual homes. If everybody took care of the issues going on inside their own home, every person addressed the issue going on in their own home, every person, because everybody lives somewhere, everything would be fixed. I mean, it's really that simple. And I really want you to think just, I want you to think that all the way through to how real and how true that is. If every, and how simple it is, because it's, I mean, it's your home. If every single person said, I am going to get my house 
to 100% in agreement to a goal that is productive for us as a family or as a household so that then we can work within our community to try to do the same thing amongst the other families in our community who in their individual homes are also doing this work. Because everybody lives somewhere. It's really that simple. It's that simple. So like going back to this reporter, um, you know, on this energy issue, like what was, what was your goal? Like, what is it that you wanted people to know and why? What, what was your concern? And that, and what is it that you thought was going to be a concern to the people who listened to this story? And what, and then what were they, what are people supposed to do about it? Because essentially what they're trying to do in California, if, if the whole place don't burn down is to force people to, you know, get rid of their solar because they're done with that now. You know, they have to implement it in the beginning to get people to be invested in the idea that they really care about them. So now we're done with that now. We, you know, we can't, you know, we can't tolerate this idea that y'all are going to move to a next level where you decide you don't need municipal services anymore because we need for everybody to stay on this grid because that's how we keep things centralized so we can't have people being able to function individually or uniquely within their own home and we don't have access to it or worse we have to actually come out to where you are you know like we used to do back in world war one and world war two where we had to actually go on site you know to do the work we can do it all remotely now with Space Force because President Trump has helped by investing all this money before he left office and then starting this pattern of allocations in the billions so that we can get this Space Force going so that any, you know, any of us in these top positions can do whatever it is we need to do to a individual target in an individual house remotely so then they don't know it's us or know who it is we, you know they can blame it on somebody else say it's their next door neighbor or say it's their husband doing it or you know whatever um you know so now they want everybody to have generators on their house and that's what that is i mean that is how they slowly condition people to want or accept or you know or, or to find to decide they need some aspect of the infrastructure that is necessary for them to do what they need to do but you can avoid all of that if everybody in your household has a goal and all agree. And they were like, well, you know what? I know this, the state wants us to do this or the city wants us to do this, but we don't need it for what we're doing. You know, somebody else needs it for what they're doing. That's on them, but we don't need it. But a whole lot of people will probably say we don't need it. <laughs> you know, we're our house is straight. We know what we're working on. We're working on it together. We are going to be involved in anything that's counter to this. Um, our goal is not, and l listen, Because part of the reason why I'm able to say I don't want to be here anymore and really mean it is because there is no aspect of the uh, female within a family checklist I haven't done. I've already finished. I finished the list. I went. I have all the degrees. I bought the house. We had the car. Even had not just the car. We had BMWs, which you know that's supposed to be the, the car. We had dog, cat. We've had kids. Um, you know, I've had the career, I've had the success, um, you know, I've traveled some, you know, I don't, there's nothing. And so then, you know, if the earth, if the world doesn't improve and get better, then what, I mean, what would I do next? There's nothing else. I mean, I already did all of that. I did the house, car, kids, career, degrees, um, all of that. And then, and guess what? And then the, re the final result of having accomplished all of that is they destroyed my life. And I hate the people who had no life, no family, no other place to go, who then came into my world and destroyed it to make my world like theirs. Instead of trying to make their lives like mine, because they are jealous, they decided they wanted to destroy my life and my family and my home. So then now I feel homeless. There's nowhere else for me to go. There's nowhere else I want to go, but there's nowhere else I could go. You know, the way that our family is structured and pulled apart right now, you know, it's not like I could just leave here and go and stay with somebody. I, well, that's not true. I talked to my sister yesterday who I missed greatly. She was like, yeah, come on, come, you can come stay with me if you want to come stay, which is how it should be. But, you know, there's nothing else. I mean, what else? There's what? 
If you have some ideas about what I could do next, then you let me know. If it's help my kids raise their kids, I don't want to help. I don't want my kids to have kids in this dumpster fire of a planet. It would be too hard for them and for those kids. And ultimately, what my life has taught them is if you make if you accomplish all the things they say are available for you to accomplish that once you get there, if you won't do a reset and then like try to get a bigger house and more cars and, you know, and want to raise kids, you know, your grandkids or whatever, they'll destroy it. They'll completely destroy your entire life. Everything you built. Even if you're like, I just want to sit here. I don't want to do anything. I just, I'll just sit right here. They will still try to destroy your life because that is, is, is a threat because then you might start trying to change other people's minds around these rid ridiculous social goals that they have in this socially administrated society that we live in or this um uh, uh, military administrated society that we live in social secured society that we live in so i don't there's nothing else if you have some listen i'm open if you have some other ideas that you think i would accept as a next level step for me so that I would continue to feel like I have something to work towards and to grow, which is, you know, how eternity works. You know, there's always more for you to learn and for you to work towards and to grow into than on here on, on planet earth amongst all of these trifling people who are around me, including some of you who like to lurk, then let me know. Otherwise I don't, there's no, re I don't have, if people, the bit, the challenge for me is that everybody change and trash this federal government. That's the only thing that I would, you know, I would accept as a challenge, but I would have to see starting in my own home and in my own community, a huge collective of people who are actually doing that, who are willing to show their face and say, you know what, we don't have any fear. And collectively, we are working to destroy this federal government so that we can all live together in localities that are are joined together by a mutual agreement to do no intentional harm 100% of the time. And because of that, we're able to dwell amongst each other in other local communities and enjoy the things that they develop in their own communities and their creativity and all that other stuff. Where they're not doing things like making Jenga. Can y'all believe, I mean, the things, I mean, and, what, and they probably are really good ideas. They gave, gave these ideas, the problems to some kids some young folks and said, listen, how would you solve this problem? And they came up with some really creative things for a problem we really don't need fixed. That's not the problem. That's not what we need creative ideas to work on. You know, we already got, they already have things in place that they use and that they will continue to use. They're not going to stop using this, these weapons. You ask me what makes a person dangerous to themselves and somebody else is access to weapons and everything is weaponized. Even other human beings are turned into weapons. There is no aspect of nature or synthetic life that they do not manipulate into weapons. That's just what they do. So anyway, this video is like 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop and I'll probably cry a little bit if I need to. And you know, whatever, but I just, I really need for people to change their mind.